Rita, welcome. Thank you. How are you enjoying your time in Norfolk? I'm loving my time in Norfolk, as I always do. Okay. Are you ready for these questions? Yes. So the first one is stage presence. Who or what has been your greatest influence in the performing arts? My influences in the performing arts are not your usual. Um, I didn't grow up loving musical theatre. I grew up loving film. I grew up loving TV. Um, I was slightly obsessed with Judy Garland when I was a kid. Um, the Wizard of Oz was on in my house constantly. Um, so kind of the old Hollywood stuff I think I used to be fascinated with. Um, and then it was just film and TV. But if I was going to go with one person as a kid that made me go, well, I want to do that, it would have been Judy Garland. Fantastic. So the next question, all the world's a stage. What has been your favourite place to perform? Um, I have a favourite place that I have performed, not necessarily because it was the best place, because so many places I've been to are incredible and I've been to a lot of places now. It's the fact that I was performing the song Island at the Board Gosh in Dublin to an Irish audience and it was just the best week of my life because my character in Legally was obsessed with Ireland. So for that reason, it would be Dublin. Otherwise, I'd say Brighton because I just love doing that theatre. And when you were here with Legally as well, you really had that connection that, you know, when your character came out, it was the kind of the heartwarming character. So doing that in Dublin must have been amazing. It was incredible. Um, I mean, the audience has always loved Paulette, but the Irish audiences loved Paulette. And, the, and I have to say the other places I've performed, which are nothing to do with musical theatre or theatre, um, were all the arenas. I did Wembley Arena. I did um, Manchester Arena, Newcastle Arena, because I did all my girl band stuff years ago. So people are always surprised when I go, yeah, I've done Wembley about seven times. So that was an incredible place to play. Stage Fright. What has been the toughest moment of your career? Regarding stage fright. Regarding just, stage fright, but I was wondering if there might be a spooky answer to this one. Um, oh, the toughest moment of my career is not what you is not the stock answer you think I'm going to give you. It would be getting up at five in the morning, having 22 scenes to film that day at EastEnders, um, going into work, having not really looked at them because you didn't have time because you were filming 12 hours the day before and going on set and making sure that you don't waste everyone's time by faffing about and knowing those 22 scenes that you're about to film. That's a good answer. I was expecting something sort of Bush Tucker related, to be honest. No, the jungle was easy in comparison to, to stage. The jungle was easy. The only thing that was hard about the jungle was the hunger um, and the boredom. But the, the, the Bush Tucker trials were actually quite easy. <laughs> So the next question, centre stage. What has been the moment in your career that you feel defines you as an artist? Oh, the, the problem with my career is I, I've done so many very different things. You couldn't get uh, what I'm doing now, this play, The House on Cold Hill, couldn't be more different from Roxy. Um, I think everything I've done has defined me, but the thing that people remember me for is obviously playing Roxy because I was there for so long. I was there for 10 years um, so I'd say EastEnders would have been my defining, uh, my career defining job. Okay, so the next question, stagehand, what piece of advice would you give somebody wanting to pursue a career like yours? <laughs> Without being sarcastic. Um, oh God, get ready for knockbacks. Mm. Um, get ready for more knockbacks. Uh, keep trying. One, what someone once said to me, an old manager of mine, if you don't give up, you can't fail and you really do if you're someone that takes everything to heart and takes knockbacks personally forget it you're not going to do well in this industry you have got to struggle and you've got to pay your dues and you've got to earn your stripes but eventually if you've got any talent you will get there harsh but fair i think i should be a judge <laughs> <I? laughs> and the final question the next stage what does the future Hold for Rita Simons. Well, the future does hold something, but I can't actually say at this point. But no, I'm no, hoping no exclusive for us. No, absolutely not. Um, but there is something I'm doing, and you will find out soon. A very good teaser. So that's it. How did you find the questions? I found them fabulously scintillating. 
<laughs> you don't say that every time. <laughs> okay, so before you go, please tell us about the house on Cold Hill. Well, the house on Cold Hill is um, a spine tingling, chilling thriller. We don't call it a horror because people often associate horror with blood and gore, but it's not. It's a it's a paranormal thriller. Um, in a nutshell, myself, Caro, my husband Ollie, Joe McFadden, and my daughter Jade, uh, played by Persephone Spells Dawson, move up from Brighton to this big country house, and it used to be a monastery. And um, we're very professional, cynical types. We don't go for all of the claptrap, you know, haunted stuff. Stuff starts happening. We're not sure whether it's rumours. We're not sure whether someone's playing around with us. And that kind of escalates. Ollie's keeping secrets from me. I'm keeping secrets from Ollie. None of us want to tell each other what we've seen. And it becomes a bit of a mystery as to is this paranormal or is this someone messing with us? And I can't tell you the ending. And why do you think people should come? People should come because, well, Peter James has an incredible following. Um, I, I can't believe that we have played to nearly packed out theatres every night of this tour. I didn't realise how big a following Peter James had. His books are absolute page turners. Um, and I guess sitting and watching the show is like watching a, a book that you've read and loved come to life. So... People should come because I they will anyway because they love Peter James and this is a classic Peter James story. Thank you so much, Rita. Thank you.